You know, we're faced with a critical issue, the failure of the judicial system to serve men of color. This isn't just about recognizing the injustice. It's about understanding the power of a strong spiritual foundation to overcome these challenges. Through faith, we can rise above societal traps and embrace God's greater plan for our lives. I'll see you on the inside. All right, what's up, y'all? What's going on today? Welcome back to the show. This is Today's Man Podcast. I'm your host, Malachi Mitchell. And let me give you the flavor for the day. You want to know what the flavor of the day is? You ready? The flavor of the day is overcoming injustice, a spiritual path to triumph for men of color. This is a good topic. This is a worthy topic and it needs a lot of attention. It's been getting a lot of attention, but it needs even more attention because this is something that's not going to go away. So here's what I want to do just briefly today, because I don't want to stay on this topic too long because it can take a while to unpack a lot of this. But in brief, I just want to share some tidbits with you, some good bullet points for you. And then we're going to get out the way. So here's what I want to do today. I want to discuss a critical issue. Issue that has been plaguing our society for far too long. Now, I'm not a political person. I don't get into all those political debates. I don't go back and forth with people that have their opinions on who they like or on what side, whether it's the right or left. I really don't care. But this conversation is not just about recognizing the problem, but also about understanding the importance of a strong spiritual foundation and overcoming these challenges. And what are these challenges? The failure of the judicial system to serve men of color. This is a big issue. This is a big problem. But here's what I want to encourage you with. Regardless of who you are, regardless of where you are, and regardless of what you're dealing with, and regardless of what you've dealt with, God has a better plan for each of us. Would you not agree with that? And with his guidance, not the guidance of man, but with God's guidance, we can rise above societal traps and embrace the destiny he has for us. And God has a tremendous destiny for us all. I learned that the statistics are staggering and it's heartbreaking when you really get into it and start reading about it, hearing about it, witnessing it from police encounters to sentencing. The judicial system disproportionately affects men of color. Yes or yes. African-American men, men of color, are six times more likely to be incarcerated than white men. This disparity isn't just a reflection of crime rates. It's a manifestation of systemic biases and institutional racism that have been ingrained in our society for generations, <laughs> for centuries. This has been a problem. The impact on families and communities is devastating, leading to cycles of poverty, limited educational opportunities, and a pervasive sense of hopelessness. Now, I know many of you that are listening, you can debate on this all day long, but I'm not here to debate you. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm not here to hear your opinions. I'm just sharing some information, something that was on my heart. And I wanted to just get it out there for a little while. Now, one compelling story that illustrates this failure 
involves the case of Khalif Browder. I don't know if you've heard of Khalif. I think they had a Netflix special about this, but he was a young African-American man who was arrested at the age of 16 for allegedly stealing a backpack. Now, because he was unable to post bail like most underprivileged black men, black boys, men of color, they cannot post bail because they don't have the money to post bail. Nobody in their family can post bail. He spent three years, y'all, on Rikers Island awaiting trial. A 16-year-old on Rikers Island in there with hardened criminals, rapists, murderers, you name it. And two of those years that he spent on Rikers Island was in solitary confinement. You know what solitary confinement is? I'm sure many of you have watched prison shows. Solitary confinement is a small what is it, six by six room, no windows, and you're in there 23 out of 24 hours of the day? They give you one hour to go outside and get a little sunshine, and you're still in a cage to get your sunshine. But here, this 16-year-old was confined to solitary confinement. Eventually, the charges were dropped, and he was released, but... When you think about what he went through, the psychological toll was irreparable. There was nothing in place to help him through what he went through those three years. And here's the saddest part about this. Tragically, Khalif took his own life two years after his release. What do you guys say on that what is there to talk about on that so much can be talked about right his story is a harrowing reminder of how the judicial system can fail men of color leading to unimaginable circumstances unimaginable consequences In the face of such adversity, my goodness, it is crucial to have a strong spiritual foundation. I'm one to believe that if Khalif had a strong spiritual foundation, somebody in his family, if they knew God, if they had that foundation that could have come and encouraged him, he, if he had that to rest on, stand on, lean on, I feel in my heart that his outcome would not have been the outcome that he had. He wouldn't have killed himself. The Bible reminds us our faith in God provides us with strength, hope, and the understanding that we are more than our circumstances. In Jeremiah 29, 11, oh, we can quote that. We talk about it all day. Whenever we wanna talk about prosperity, we talk about Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. This verse is a powerful reminder That no matter how dire your situation may seem, God has a purpose for our lives. He has a purpose for us. And it's not the one we're headed to right now currently, if it's negative. That's not his purpose. That's your doing. You can't blame that on the man. Or blame that on ourselves. So let me look at this through a historical context. Jeremiah spoke these words to 
Jews who had been living under the domination of the Egyptians and then Babylonian empires before eventually being carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. One can only imagine what it would be like to live under the rule of one's enemies and then those enemies force you to immigrate and settle in a foreign country. Okay, that was the historical context. Let me give you the literary context. My God sister would say, uh-oh, it's time to get a pen and paper right now. We discover from the previous chapter that Jeremiah has just pronounced judgment upon the false prophet Hananiah. Hananiah had told the people that God would break the yoke of Babylon freeing the people to return home within, get this, two years. This is why so many people want to quote, oh, I know the plans for you. We can quote that all day long. However, while Hananiah's message undoubtedly sounded appealing to the people, it sounds good to us, especially if we haven't read it, especially if we haven't researched, it was a lie and resulted in God removing Hananiah from the face of the earth. Look at Jeremiah 28, 15 through 17 and read that. You want to lie? You want to lie on God's people? You want to lie about God's people? You want to lie on God? Be careful who you put your mouth on. Because here God removed Hananiah from the face of the earth. But get this. Jeremiah comes and he tells the people the truth. Instead of Following that same path that Hananiah followed, Jeremiah tells the people they will live in Babylon, get this now, for at least 70 years. Therefore, they should settle down, build houses, marry, and even pray for the peace and prosperity of the city in which they now find themselves. Jeremiah 29, 4 through 10. Now, we want to scream and holler all day about Jeremiah 29 and 11. But before you get to 29 and 11, you need to read 29, 4 through 10. Are you willing to wait 70 years to be able to be blessed? Are you willing to wait 70 months, 70 weeks, 70 hours? Really doesn't matter what it is, right? You're not willing to wait that long. But not only wait, you got to settle down right where you are. You got to build houses right where you are. You got to marry right there where you are and even pray. Oh, that gets me right there. You got to even pray for the peace and prosperity of the city in which you now find yourself. That's hard. When understood in context. See, that's the thing. We have to understand in context. We discover that the words of Jeremiah 29, 11 were spoken to people in the midst of hardship and suffering. People who were likely desiring an immediate rescue like the one Hananiah lied about. We are so quick to hear a lie. We are so quick to accept the lie. We would rather most people, I don't want to put a blanket on everybody, most people much rather Accept the lie, then accept the truth. But God's response is not to provide immediate escape from the difficult situations in which we're in. God promises that he has a plan to prosper you in the midst of your current situation. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever you're dealing with right now, it's God's promise to prosper you right where you are. You can be in the enemy's camp. God will prosper you. Christians facing difficult situations today. Is that you? Are you one of those ones that's facing difficult situations today? You can take comfort in Jeremiah 29, 11. Knowing that it is not a promise to immediately rescue us from hardship or suffering. 
but rather a promise that God has a plan for our lives. That's the beautiful part about it. And regardless of our current situation, he can work through it to prosper us and give us hope and a future. That's basically what that verse means. That's what it says. That's the literary context. Having a spiritual foundation means trusting in God's plan and leaning on his wisdom, not man's wisdom, not our own wisdom. It's God's wisdom because it empowers us to see beyond the immediate challenges and to recognize our worth and our potential. A lot of people, they don't really understand their worth. They don't understand their potential. If they did, they would act better. If they did, they would hold up their heads, knowing that God is with them, knowing that God has promised to bring you out, knowing that God has promised to prosper you by grounding ourselves in faith. We can resist the societal trap that tells us we are destined for failure because of the color of our skin. That right there is enough to shout hallelujah. We must reject this narrative and embrace the truth that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And here's the cream of the crop. Here's the whipped cream on top with a unique purpose to fulfill. You have a unique purpose to fulfill. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop playing the woe is me. Stop playing the victim. Stop dragging other people into your mess. A spiritual foundation provides a moral compass, guiding us to make righteous decisions, even when the world seems unjust. Doesn't matter what the world's doing. It encompasses us to pursue justice and equality, not just for ourselves, but for our community. It's not about me, myself, and I. It's about those that are around me. How can I help them? I used to have this saying, or it used to be a saying, help me help you to help us. Faith-driven reliance. This enables us to advocate for systemic change. It enables us to advocate for supporting one another and build a legacy of hope and progress. This will take a whole lot more work on our part. We have a whole lot more work to do, ladies and gentlemen. This is not over. We're gonna be in this struggle for quite a while, at least until Jesus comes back. At least until we go to see our maker. If God does not intervene, we're gonna to continue to have this type of struggle. You gotta stand up and say, I refuse to struggle anymore. I refuse to be subjected to the judicial system and how it does not favor men of color. Before I get into a tangent, let me close with this. I told you I wasn't going to be long. While the judicial system continues to fall short of serving men of color, we must not succumb to despair. Don't succumb to despair, y'all. Instead, we should draw our strength from our faith, knowing that God has a better plan for us. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know your struggles. I don't know what you're facing right now, but know that God has a better plan for you. Stop saying what the man, quote unquote, won't allow you to do. You can do anything that you want to do, okay, within reason. Why not stand on the promises of God to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and that you have a unique purpose to fulfill? 
Start learning how to fulfill the purpose that God has placed into your life. And the only way that you're going to find that out, you got to lay before God. You got to read your word. You have to pray. You have to seek God. If I can encourage you, every one of you that's watching me, that's listening, even you haters that are out there about to post all this negativity about, oh, it's always about the black man. It's always about the black, the black, the brown, the black. That's because of what we've dealt with all of our lives. But if there's one thing that I can encourage you to do, one thing, that would be let us support one another, advocate for justice, and remain steadfast in our belief that with God guidance, we can overcome any obstacle. Any obstacle we can overcome because of God's grace. And together, this is a all-inclusive togetherness. We can create a future where every individual is valued and treated with the dignity and respect that we deserve. We all deserve to be treated better. No matter what the color of your skin, no matter who you are, no matter your background, no matter what you look like, what you sound like, does not matter. You make a difference. You can make a difference. No matter what the color of their skin, you know, There was a doctor that once said to his students while he was cutting open his patient on the operating table, he looked down and he looked back up and he told them, see, we all look the same on the inside. And that's a fact, ladies and gentlemen, we all bleed red. We are all the same on the inside. And so with that, I want to close out with prayer. I want to pray for you today because I understand that it's important for us to stand on the word of God and also to stand in prayer one for another. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts burdened by the injustices that men of color face within our society. We lift every brother and every sister who has been marginalized, oppressed, and overlooked. Lord, we ask for your divine intervention in their lives, bringing justice, bringing peace, and bringing restoration where it is so desperately needed. Father, we thank you for the strength and resilience you have bestowed upon these men and these women. Help them to stand firm on your promises, knowing that you are a God of justice and righteousness. Empower them with your spirit to rise above the societal traps and to see themselves as you see them, fearfully and wonderfully made, with a unique purpose and destiny in you. Guide us all to be agents of change, advocating for fairness and equality. Fill our hearts with your love and wisdom, that we may support one another in this journey towards justice. Let us be reminded that your plans are for our good, to give us a future and a hope. Lord, as we stand on your promises, we trust in your faithfulness. We believe that with guidance, we can overcome any obstacle and triumph over injustice. Strengthen our faith and courage and help us to walk in your truth and light. In Jesus' blessed name, we pray. Amen. Y'all be good to one another. I look forward to seeing you again real soon on today's Man Podcast. Tell a friend. Don't keep it to yourself. Share the wealth. Until then, I am my mama's baby boy. Y'all be blessed here. <laughs>